So we've done a bit of factorizing now. So let's do a bit of practice by looking at some questions that I've got from various past exam papers from various schools that deal with factorizing. I suggest that you get a pen and paper and see if you can work on these alongside me because it'll give you a good sense of where you are. Okay, let's have a look at question one. What would be our first step in working on this? So here, hopefully, you recognise that what we have is a situation of taking out a common factor. And in fact, that's what we always look for when we're factorising. The first thing we look for is a common factor. So here, if I have a look for the numbers, it's 3, 9 and 12. So the highest common factor there is going to be a 3. Then the x's, they've got an x squared. Let me put the 3 down first. Then I've got an x squared, an x cubed and an x squared. So the most I can take out is x squared, and then the y's, y, y squared, y squared, the most I can take out is a y. All right, so then looking at what's left from here, I've taken out a 3, taken out an x squared, taken out a y, so I just need to put a 1 in because 3 x squared y times 1 gives me 3 x squared y. All right, now focusing here, I've taken out a 3, so I've got a minus 3, because minus 3 times 3 gives me minus 9. From the x cubed, I've taken out an x squared, so I've got x left. From the y squared, I've taken out a y, so I've got y left. And then I look at my last term, and what's going to be left of the 12? 12 divided by 3 is 4. From the x squared, I've taken out an x squared, so nothing left. y squared, taken out a y, so there's just y left. And there's nothing more for me to do there. OK, have a look at 1.2.2. First, you always look for a common factor, but there's no common factor here. All right, after that, can you recognize the format of this one? Hopefully you recognized it as a difference of two squares. So we know that we're going to have 4x times 4x to give me 16x squared and a plus 1 minus 1 to give me the minus 1. Okay, what about this one? What's always our first step when we factorize it? We look for a common factor. And here we do have a common factor because 2 divides into 2 and also into 18. So we're first going to take out that common factor. And then we end up with this scenario. Do you recognize 9a to the 4 minus b squared? What kind of factorization would go with that? Hopefully you also recognize that that is a difference of two squares. So the b is very, b squared is very easy, right? That must come from plus b minus b. Your 9, no problem. 3 times 3 gives you 9. What about your a to the 4? Well, it's going to be a squared multiplied by a squared, which gives you a to the power of 4. OK, what about 1.2.4? First thing we always look for is a common factor. Now, there is, in fact, a common factor here. It's just a really strange looking common factor. Do you see that each of the terms has got p minus 2q in it? So p minus 2q is the common factor here. So just as we've always done with common factors, we can pull out that p minus 2q. What is left from here? Well, we've pulled out the p minus 2q. So what's left is the r. And what is left from here? Well, we've pulled out the p minus 2q. So we've just got to put in a 1, because 1 times p minus 2q will get us back to p minus 2q. And so we have factorized as asked. OK, the last one we want to factorize is this. So again, as always, we look for a common factor first. Now, if I look through all of these, 
there isn't actually a common factor for all of them because if this one has, although this one has an A and this one has an A, these two don't, and although this one has a B and that one has a B, those two don't. So there isn't a single common factor that goes through all of them. But one thing I can try out is to see if I can group them and take common factors out of, of two. So you see, if I have a look here, if I'm playing around with this a bit, I see that one and that one have an A in them. And this one and this one have a D in them. So I can go ahead and let me just kind of put them together next to each other so it looks a bit prettier. So there are my two ones that have got an A in them next to each other. And then here are my two that have got a D in them next to each other. Now, if I just work with them as little pair groupings, out of this one I can take out an A and I'm left with B plus C. And out of this one I can take out a D and I'm left with C plus B. Now, B plus C and C plus B are exactly the same thing. So what I've got here is A, B plus C, and D, B plus C. And now, just like the previous one, I've got a common factor. It's just a very funny looking common factor, B plus C, but I can pull that out. So I pull out my B plus C, that funny common factor, what am I left with from the first thing? Well, an A. What am I left with from the second term? A D. And I factorized completely.